So good evening, everybody. My name is John. This is Nathaniel. This is Jordan. Um, what we're going to do first, the, the main goal today is to show you what, who we are. Who are the Israelites? What's our history? What's the history of blacks, Latinos, Hispanics, West Indians? What does God say we are? Today we have African American, Haitian. That's the names that we say. Those are labels. But what does the Bible say we are? A lot of times when you speak to people, you ask them, who are you in the Bible? You know what we say? I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Well, when you read the Bible, there's over 18 nations. Which one do you come from? Once you ask that question, you know what we say? I, don't, I can't answer that. They leave it alone. We're going to be able to show you where do you come from in the Bible. Before we go with the presentation on the scriptures, we're going to show you a film. The film is called Joseph's Dream. The reason we put this film together is because when you watch films in Hollywood, a lot of times what you will find is Hollywood never is accurate with historical depiction. Hollywood, for example, you had Gods of Egypt. How many of y'all seen that movie? Horrible. Very good. So you've seen it. Gods of Egypt. You ever heard of it? Gods of Egypt? No. What about Son of God? What about the Ten Commandments? Yes. Okay, the Ten Commandments. How did they depict the people from Africa? What color? What color? Right. Don't worry, you're not going to get in trouble. Yeah, Caucasian. <laughs> they depicted them as Caucasian. The only people in the Ten Commandments by Charles and Hester that was black was the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. But our point is Hollywood was inaccurate in showing you what was the color of the Israelites. Moses, they had him as Caucasian. Moses is not Caucasian, that is incorrect. So we did a film ourselves, and we put a film together based on Matthew chapter two. So we're gonna show you the film. I want you to pay attention when you watch the film. Look at how the women are dressed. Look at how the men are dressed. Look at the children. Look at the occupations. So we did this as accurate as possible based on what the scripture says, all right? So after the film, if you have questions, ask, and we'll show you why we projected certain things. After the film, we show that, we discuss it, then we're going to go into the presentation of the scriptures, all right? All right, let's pray. Um, something about my spirit kind of like goes with this a little bit, so. Yes, ma'am. The reason, uh, like I said earlier, the reason why we put this film together was to show Hollywood inaccuracy. And to show that the Bible, remember Matthew chapter 2, that actually happened. That's real. The Bible, all of this that's in the Bible is historically accurate. They put that together. They wrote it down for records. What we did was turn those records into a film off of two chapters. Off of two chapters. Now, get to uh, the dark. Okay, you got it? Get uh, Deuteronomy. Um, no, matter of fact, start with Psalm chapter 68. Psalm 68. Uh, quick question. How many of y'all have read the Bible before, been to church? Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand, been to church. Okay. Now, um, the Bible, when you read the scriptures, the Bible is a history book. The history based on who the Israelites are. Whenever you read the Bible, you're reading about the Israelites. Everybody you saw in that film, so the Caucasian you saw in that film, it's the same thing today. America has 800 military bases across the world. They're in all these different countries. They will allow them to do certain things, but they're there observing. So that's what Rome did. So that's why you saw the guard asking about Christ. Christ is a black man. That's right in the Bible. Let's start off with that. Psalm 68, verse 20. Mm -hmm. He that is our Psalm God. Psalm 68, 11. So that's verse 11. Verse 11. Yeah. The Lord gave the word. Uh -huh. Great was the company of those that published it. So the Bible says the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So when you open the Bible and you see Jeremiah, those are records he documented of what he saw during his time. Eventually, those records became published. When you read Habakkuk, when you read Isaiah, those are all records. When you read the book of Isaiah, you're reading about the time of a black man, this who's an Israelite, during the time of Assyria rule. When you read Jeremiah, you're reading about a time where a black man is writing the records on the Israelites when Ethiopians rule. So that's why I said it's a history book. Now, go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. So what we're going to do, not only are we going to show you 
scriptures on who are the Israelites. We're going to show you archaeology that proves everything the Bible says is true. Read Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So here's my question. What race of people have woolly hair? Black people have woolly hair. Start at verse 11. Start at verse 11. Verse 11. Uh-huh. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So this is Christ speaking to John the Apostle. Read on. The first and the last. He says the first and the last. Come on. And what thou seest. So he's telling John what you see. Read. Write in a book. I want you to document what you see of me. So John does that. Now jump to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hair. So his head and his hair. So John is describing Christ from top to bottom. Read. His head and his hairs were uh -huh. white like wool. It said it was white and it was woolly. So he gave you the color and he also gave you the texture. So if somebody said, Christ's color is not in the Bible, that is inaccurate. It is in the Bible. So a lot of times you've probably seen some of us doing our ministry out in the street, sometimes in jails, sometimes in different churches. We, we travel all over because guess what? When we went to Ghana, we went to Ghana teaching. You know what our brothers said in Ghana? Christ is not black. What are you talking about? That's what they said. So some brothers you'll see, you'll probably your cousin Ray Ray from Harlem, he'll tell you that Jesus Christ, let everybody know Christ is black. Everybody does not know Christ is black. Everybody don't, and everybody has not seen that. Read it again. His head and his hair right. were white like wool. So it's already letting you know. That alone that he has woolly hair, this is a dark skinned man. But continue. As white as snow. Okay. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay. And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. Fine brass. B-R-A-S-S. -S. What color is brass? Brown. Now, watch, watch what John says now. Read. As if they were burned in a furnace. Now, if you take a furnace, that machine can burn up to 3,000 degrees. Now, you take brass and you burn it. What color is it coming out? You ever seen burnt chicken? What color is burnt chicken? What color is burnt rice? So whenever it says burnt, you associate burnt with black. It's not hard to figure out. This was written over 2,000 years ago. That's the point. All the history is right there. It's in our face. All you have to do is read it for yourself. I've been to church. I, my mother's Haitian. I was raised Catholic. But once I learned this record, oh, I brought it to the whole family. You got to see this. You got to see this. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Didn't even want to read it. Now I'm showing family members like, hey, remember what you were telling me 20 years ago? Can you show me that again? Can you show me that again? Why? Because things are going crazy in the world. Now people want answers. So now read this. Yes. Uh, people would probably go back to that part where you're describing his head. Go back to the head. Verse, verse 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, right there, because in my opinion, the Bible is meant to be interpreted in many different ways, mm -hmm. right? Which makes it so acceptable to everybody. Mm -hmm. You could uh, take it as his feet being, you know, black mm -hmm. as the dirt on his feet, right? Mm -hmm. But as you said, it's his head mm -hmm. and his hair, mm -hmm. right? Not the, not the hair on his head or anything. Mm -hmm. like his head and his hair right. were both white, right? Right. So I'm not saying that Jesus was white, but I'm saying. So what color is so Jesus? His color, because I know his color. Then what color is it? Hmm? What I'm color is it? He's black. But I'm saying left interpretation. I'm gonna show you that that interpretation you gave is incorrect. Watch this now. Give me the book of Hebrews chapter seven, verse fourteen. Now watch this. I want you to see something now. So Revelation chapter one. No, now I want y'all to ask questions though. I want you to ask questions. That's the point. We want questions so you can understand for yourself. You gotta. We're reading this because we read it plenty of time. But you gotta prove to yourself. Have you ever looked into your history? Have you ever wondered who are you? Because you know, everybody here, you know your last name. That's not really your last name. A lot of your last. That's not your real last name. Now, if I ask you, get, tell me your name before. Tell me your name five generations ago. Most of us here could not do that. We don't have access to those records. Why? Because we were enslaved. So I'm showing you your history before slavery. So now, read this. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. 
For it is evident. It is evident. It is clear that our Lord sprang out of Judah. That our Lord, which is who? Jesus, our Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. But wait, read it again so they can hear the whole thing. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Out of Judah. So it's letting you know our Lord and Savior, Jesus, he came from the biblical tribe of Judah. J-U-D-A-H. Now watch this. Go to Jeremiah chapter uh, 8. No, matter of fact, let's start at, let's go to Jeremiah 14 too. Jeremiah 14, 2. Now, the biblical tribe of Judah, watch what Jeremiah says about it. Remember, I'm using, what's your name? Hars. Uh, say again? Hars. Hars. I'm using this to further prove that he was talking about color. This is Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth. Jeremiah is talking about the tribe of Judah. He says this tribe is in mourning. This tribe is going through tribulation. Jeremiah is documenting about the tribe of Judah. Watch what he says. And the gates thereof languish. Uh -huh. They are black. What color is Judah? They he didn't say him. He said they. What? They are black unto the ground. Judah, Christ came from that lineage. Jeremiah is already telling you what color they are. So what color is Judah? They're black. There you go. There you go. Watch this. I'm going to further prove it. Give me Lamentations. Give me, no, give me Jeremiah 821. <laughs> Jeremiah 821. Yeah, read Jer Jeremiah 14 too. Read it again. Jer Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, you in particular, I want you to ask questions. I want you, okay. But, but, but look, but look, but this is the thing. The way we are in the street, the way we are in jail, the way we are in churches, we're always the same. We are here to show you proof of who you are. That's why I said I want you in particular, because I know you're thinking about it. I know you got opinions. That's what I'm saying. Say it. Say it. So that way, because when we leave, he'll be the first one on Twitter. Yo, this is what they said. And so you had a chance to speak up, and you didn't take it. <laughs> Go ahead. Read this. Read this. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah mourning. Right. And the gates thereof language. Uh -huh. They are black. Judah is black. Unto the ground. So he's comparing the ground with black, and he's letting you know Judah, that people, are black. Now go to Jeremiah 8.21. Watch what Jeremiah says. What's your name, by the way? Ty. T uh, Ty. So Ty, uh, Horace. Horace, and what's your name, man? Lisa. Lisa. Okay, watch this. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 21. Uh -huh. and, and look at this. All these scriptures we read, most of y'all did not hear this in church before. Mo there you go. That, that, there you go. There you go. When I was in church, I never. You know what scriptures I heard in church? Jesus loved me. Jesus wept. That's what I heard in church. That's what I heard. In church. Turn the other cheek. Wait, wait. So I asked my mother, Mother, if I'm in a fight, you want me to turn the cheek for him to hit me again? Yes. What? Listen, I ain't never listened to that a day in my life. Exactly. None of us did. Why you want to touch me? Exactly. But but look, when you read the Bible, it tells you to defend yourself. But that turn the other cheek has been misinterpreted. Now watch this. Read this. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 21. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. Watch this. I am black. Jeremiah's telling you what color he is. When you type in on Google, some of you can do it now. Type in Jeremiah. You're going to see an image of a Caucasian. Spell that? Jeremiah. J-E-R-E-M-I-A-H. I know you know how to spell Jeremiah. So look, watch this, watch this now. Um, give me Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 8. Ty, you see it, bro. There you go. But, but, but Ty, look at this. The Bible, Jeremiah's telling us he's black. But if, say it again. No, no. <laughs> look, what did you say? Ty, look, what did you say? Look, when somebody says, when somebody says they're black, are you thinking albino? No, but people being black is just albino. Right, but if somebody said black, are you thinking albino? Nah. But watch this now, Ty. Watch this. I'm going to show you what's an albino. Go back to Jeremiah 14, 2. Watch what he says. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah mourneth in the gates thereof language. Uh -huh. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. What is it letting you know? It's associating ground with black. The deeper you go in the soil, the darker it gets. Showing you what? 
black people, we're not all the same color. You have dark black. You have my complexion black. You have her complexion black. There's different shades of black. You understand? Jeremiah is letting you know, once again, his color. Go to Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. Watch this. Their visage. Visage is facial appearance. This is talking about the Israelites. Read. Is blacker than a coal. Does that sound albino? Not at all. Blacker than a coal. He's describing again the color of the Israelites. When we read these scriptures, do you know how many people are shocked? Why? Because they never read it for themselves. Read uh, Lamentations 5 and 10. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Our skin was black Come like on. an oven. Come on, read it again. Our skin was black like an oven uh -huh. because of the terrible famine. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Get Job 30 and 30. Right now, before I get to you, Terrible family. Yeah, he's describing the conditions during that time. Right now, I'm showing you particular scriptures just on when they mention their color. Then I'm going to get to our history. I'm going to show you the history of Jamaicans, Haitians, Africa. I'm going to show you the whole history. But I'm just showing you proof that the men that wrote these records look like us. Look like us. So when people say, sometimes you may have heard somebody say, listen, I don't follow the Bible. You know why? It's a white man's book. That has nothing to do with me. They never read these scriptures. They never read these scriptures. So now, read Job 30 and 30. This is the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. Famous man. Watch what he says. My skin is black upon me. My skin is black upon me. Job is letting you know his color. Now, get me the image of God. Get me Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. When you speak to people, they'll say, God has no color. God doesn't have a color. God is a spirit. I'm going to show you in the Bible, God, the creator, he has a color. Watch this. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Come on. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So God shows Daniel a vision, just like what you saw in the film. Joseph was shown a vision. The reason why Christ, Joseph, Mary, the family, fled into Egypt was to hide. Side note. If Jesus Christ was Caucasian, why would he hide in Egypt, in Africa? That makes no sense. Why would he run to Egypt to hide from Rome? Proof, Christ is black. The family, they were hiding from the Romans. That is historically accurate. Herod, he killed thousands of black children because he was trying to kill Christ. So what happened? They ran into Egypt. So now I'm showing you God himself, the man that a lot of us pray to. I'm going to show you the color of the man you're praying to. Mm. Read this. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Mm -hmm. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So Daniel was sent a dream. A lot of us here, you have dreams. You wake up, you have a dream trying to remember the details. Daniel had a dream. This dream now some of y'all, when you have a dream, it's just crazy. It was not sent by God. But guess what? Some dreams are sent by God. Daniel wrote this dream down. Let's see what he says. Read. And the ancient of days did sit. Who was here before days began? God. So Daniel calls God the ancient of days. He saw God sitting down. Letting you know what? God has a body. Remember, we were made in the image of God. We have hands. We have feet. We have legs. God has all of this. We have hair. We have no. God has all of this. So it says the ancient of days, he sat. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. Now he sees him in a glorious white garment. It's not a white bed sheet that a kid wears on Halloween. No, 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 no. This is honor. This is pure decorative garment. We can't imagine this. Why? Because we're, we're human. We're flesh. So what we think is honorable we're not on the level of the Most High God. Watch this now. Watch what he says. And the hair of his head. So God has hair. Read. Of his head like the pure like wool. Like the pure wool. What race of people have woolly hair? Black people. The man we pray to is a black man. Watch this now. Read on. His throne was like a fiery flame. So his throne was a fiery flame, Daniel says. Now, go to uh, Genesis 2 verse 7. Now we're going to go to the first man. Now, show archaeology on this one for them. Show Adam and Eve. So what, these books that we bought, 
is books that were actually put together to show archaeology that Israelites, they were always painted dark skin. So I'm showing you not only out the Bible, but I'm going to show you with books. This is from the 1200, from the 1300, from 900, that when you look at archaeology, they were always dark skinned. So this is, this Adam Eve? This is the Garden Eden. This is the Garden Eden. So we turn it down. Look at this book. Look at this. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what skin complexion is this? Okay, watch this now. What color is this? What color is this? There you go. There you go. They had white pants. They had white paint. That his, this garment is white. But look at the skin of Adam and Eve. What color are they? But look at this. From the 13th century of Moscow, Russia. What are black people doing painted in Russia? I thought all black people come from Africa. Go to the next picture. I'm showing you art. This is Adam, this is Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. Yes, this is Adam and Eve again. Look at this. This is found in Italy. Look at this. This is white paint, but look at the skin. Look at the skin. There's more in case you have an issue believing that. Watch this. So now go to Genesis 2, verse 7. Watch this. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Right. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. It says, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Come on. And, and man became a living soul. So from the dust of the ground is the soil. What color is this first man? Black. Black. It's letting you know. Now watch this. Get Genesis 126. Genesis 126. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Uh -huh. And God said, let us make man in our image. Right. After our likenesses, uh -huh. and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, uh -huh. and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh -huh. So now, notice this. It said, let us make man in our image. So if Adam, the first man, the first man from what country? Africa, right in the section of Israel. Some people say Israel's not in Africa. Israel is in Africa. The only reason today they consider it not in Africa because of the Suez Canal, where they divided it, where they created that man-made body of water. That's when they broke off Israel from Africa. Then they said, anybody from this section of the Suez Canal, we're going to consider that Asia. Anybody on this section, we're going to consider it Northeast Africa. But prior to that, Israel was always attached with Africa. So the first man is from Africa. What color is that? Black. Black. So now, I want to show you something. So basically, you're saying we run the world as a subject of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So but, say it again. <laughs> this is what we're going to do about it. This is what we're going to do about it. This is what we're going to do about it. Like GBG for real. Watch this. The question, you asked a good question. What are we going to do about it? It starts with men. What are the men going to do about it? What are black men and Latino men that see the problems in their neighborhoods going to do about it? Most black and Latin men are focused on women, money, and clubbing. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. It, only, it takes disciplined men to come together and fix their problems. That's what, like what you see us doing. We, we were the same thing. When we heard, that's the Bible? That's the Bible? How can I help? What, what do I do? That's what we do. What we do is we go out and teach this information. Why? So we can change. So we can change. That's why I said it's not a hate campaign. Because you know what some people say? What you're teaching, that's hate speech. And is there anything hateful about what we just read to you all? Do you know why people say that? And because you're known for standing on the street corner, screaming at women, yelling, coming off angry, so your message is lost in how angry you appear. But let me show you something. You In presentation. Let me, let me, no, no, but let me show you something. Let me show you something. Some people mistaken that for anger. And guess what? We got the right to be angry, but it's passion. But guess what? We're not disrespectful. We're not disrespectful. We're not dis We're very respectful. Very respectful. But as I said, it's misinterpreted. It's misinterpreted. Now watch this. Give me um Solomon. Yeah, you get that. You get that. Yes. I said, are you um are you familiar with the the Anunnaki, no. Because yeah. um, what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh -huh. go ahead. I was say if you were familiar with the Anunnaki, you wouldn't be, you know, 
from the Adam and Eve in this life. Because the, the, um, the Anunnaki story is more like an alien that came down here and changed the DNA of the oh, no. mother. No, no. 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 Yeah. Wait, no. Here, 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 here. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish it. Right. Adam Adam exactly. Exactly. It predates everything in the Bible by, by far. Okay. Right? Because it's more focused on the um, Mesopotamia, uh, you know, religious viewpoint. So, so you say it's like a Mesopotamian religion? Yeah, but more like, yeah, like a story, but it's pred it predates the Bible and talks about the Garden of Eden, right? Uh -huh. More specifi specifies Eden, uh -huh. right? They call Adam, Adam, uh -huh. instead of Adam, right? And they also have, like, you know, many of the stuff that's, you know, talked about in there, so. So, so um, yes, sir. Second, yeah. um, one of the things that you didn't get to make the final point. Yes, sir. When you say what to do about it, it's restoring the family. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Because once the family is broken, it can never really achieve anything. You know, the lost men and women that we have is because of a lack of guidance, a lack of awareness of I have self. A question. Specifically, we women as Israelites, why not? Uh, my wife is at home. His wife is at home. We all have wives. I'm we never see no because you're not going to see women in the street. It gets violent in the street. People have shot at us. People have tried to stab us just off of reading the truth. It's not a woman's job to put herself in that type of environment. That's why I remember when you saw the film. What did you saw the women doing? They were doing chores, works that women do. Times have changed where America has said, you know what? We know women normally do work for uh, the family, work uh, at home, work that pertains to specifically for females. We're gonna change that. Let's put women in the workforce for men. America changed it, and guess what he did? It confused things. For example, if I'm at home and I'm threatened, for example, just a side note, I just want you to think about this. It's a side note. If I'm at home and I'm, I feel threatened, I'm about to get robbed, three people with a gun, I call 911. Who do you think I expect to come and help? Police. Who particular the police? A man. Why? Because he's more stronger. He's more aggressive. Now, that's not to take that. Women, you're not going to see women in NYPD, but the point is, traditionally, women always stuck to crafts that were based around their gender. America did it. America said, no, we're going to change that. We're going to, and what was it called? The Women's Feminist Movement. And what do they do? They put it in TV now. Because they want the world to accept no longer should women be in one area of work and men in another area of work. We're going to make it equal to all. All right, let's get back to the topic. And remember, at the end, ask questions at the end. Let's just finish this. So, Song of Solomon. Didn't yeah, Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, then Acts 13, and then we're going to go to the history. So any questions y'all have, please ask. If this is around women, what we do in the street, any questions, ask. All right? You could, uh, you may think, would you turn on the light, please? Like I'm, I'm good, right? Here. I'm good with the like powders right now. Say it again. I was good with the light when I was. Okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, right, this is the book of Solomon. Song of Solomon. We would chop verse one and five. Mm -hmm. Oh, also the Anunnaki. I'm gonna explain that at the end too. I'm, I'm gonna show you at the end. I'm gonna explain it. Go ahead. Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse one. Watch this. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Okay. Verse five. I am black. Solomon's letting you know his color. I am black. Jesus Christ comes from this family line, King Solomon. Solomon's from the tribe of Judah. David's from the tribe of Judah. They had their records, even from centuries prior. So Solomon says what? I am black. This is in the Bible. Guess what? You open Google right now, type in King Solomon, you're not going to see images of a black man. But he, in documentation, he says he's black. Get Acts 13.1. You're not going to believe this word is in the Bible. This is the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1. Come on. Now, they were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets. So now, I'm, I just jumped in time. A lot of those scriptures I read to you, Old Testament. All right? Now, we're talking 3,000 years ago, Ty. We're talking a while ago. Now, I'm in the New Testament. Now, this right here, Acts 13, this is during the time of Rome. So I went hundreds of years later. You with me so far? So early in the scriptures I was reading... Some were in the time of Babylon, when the Ethiopia, like 586 BC, uh, 1150 BC. Now I just jumped to now Rome time period. Watch this. Now, they were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, mm -hmm. as Barnabas and Simeon. Watch this. That was called Nigger. You didn't know that was in the Bible. 
No way. You didn't know that was in the Bible. Read it again. You didn't know that was in the Bible. What's your name, ma'am? Felicia. This is in the Bible. Now, it's not spelled N-I-G-G-E-R. It's spelled, say again, it's one G. Now, today, if you listen on the news, there's a country in Africa with that name. They pronounce, they pronounce it, uh, say it? Niger. Niger. Because it's a little spin-off with the French, so it's a little twist. But that it means black. So they called Simeon, the Apostle Peter, black. It's a nickname, the black. Like you got a nickname for your cousin, that Ray Ray. Everybody know Ray Ray. Everybody been know all these nicknames. <laughs> His nickname was the black. Read it again. Now, they were in the church that was at Antioch. Uh -huh. Certain prophets uh -huh. and teachers uh -huh. as Barnabas right. and Simeon. Simeon, is, his name is, is called Peter the Apostle. Read on. That was called nigger. That was called nigger, which means it, it, wasn't, it wasn't used. Say it again, Ty. That just sounds funny coming out of the Bible. But that's the thing. Now look at this, Ty. It wasn't used as a term of disrespect. It, was an, it just meant the black. Historically, the, you add the, a second G, it was used as disrespect. It, was, it, was a, it had a negative connotation to it. Yes, ma'am. But I was just going to say to put it in context, isn't Niger... You know, like a river. It's a river as well. Yeah, right, it's right, a river so, as well. So what I mean is, so like, I think like when you examine, when we examine all of, I agree with pretty much most of everything what you're yes, saying. Yes, ma'am. But I think it's also important to like indicate that when we look at the words, mm -hmm. you know, we can look at the historicity, we can look at the words also in terms of the original, always to stress the original um, etymology uh -huh. of the word as it originates from whether it's Hebrew, Aramaic, uh -huh. or uh, Greek, or whatever, right. so that we know the original sense. Like even if you're saying dark, right. or you say, you know, any word that you uh -huh. that you discuss, I think that when you mention it, you should also indicate the original origin of the word. You know what I mean? Right. The and reason. The reason why. So that this way you know whether it is. A figurative, uh -huh. or whether it's you know a literal interpretation yes. of the word, but that you know it takes away from it if you don't mention well the origin of the word in Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic was originally such and such. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yes. if you just say oh well this is black, this is black, but mm -hmm. it's an English word, then that can still make me question. And I was gonna say um, you know like having read the Bible myself, like I know. There's plenty of black people mm -hmm. in the Bible, so it's like a lot of African Americans. We steeped in the Bible. If there's one thing we know, we know the Bible, mm -hmm. and we and I think a lot of African Americans know like our history and a lot about people in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I think that we just don't always um, maybe 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 the generations that we have now mm -hmm. don't really look to it as the people who came up. Mm -hmm did when they were, they took these African Americans, how can I put it, maybe not, I, I shouldn't say just African Americans because there's people from no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. but I mean we historically have taken um, all of the negative things that were supposed to be, we were supposed to be being taught and we turned it around and we used it in a way that didn't make us be enslaved but it helped us come up from slavery. So I'm saying that, um, you know, a lot of the things that are in the Bible, mm. that are, even with like even with people thinking that Jesus was white, we have like historically said, okay, well, you know, we have drawn pictures of our of, of Jesus as like black, you know what I mean? Right. In the black church, because he is black. So <coughs> that's black. what I'm saying. Okay. So like, I don't think you could think that every black people just mm. think of themselves as, oh my God, Jesus is black. No, like, no, Jesus no. Jesus is white, and like we're all like oppressed because we think, well, Jesus is white. No, no, that's what, all I'm saying. No, no, I understand. Um, about the river, um, the reason why I want to stress, they call them the black, is because I want to stress color. A lot of us did not know all these people are black in the Bible. And the, the scriptures that I read, how many of y'all heard these scriptures before? How many of y'all heard before? How many of y'all, sorry, how many of y'all did not hear the scriptures that we read before? Raise your hand. Exactly. Right. Mostly I'm just everybody. Saying, no, no, no. It's, but, is but, in, like, no, in exactly. Africa. But what I want to show you is there's so many saying. people that never heard this before. Never heard this before. So that's why there's no reason to stress the river. They call him Niger because it means black. Niger means black. But I'm saying it's in Africa. 
That, that's important that people don't know. <coughs> yes. So now, hold on, bro. Yeah, what's that? Say it. I wouldn't know, but I would assume so. Um, you have Nigeria and then you have Nigeria. Niger, Nigeria and Nigeria. They're, they're the same thing. Oh, you got it? They're two different yeah, yeah, yeah. countries, but the same, yeah. Now um, watch this. He's going to read the etymology. Read it. This is the online etymology dictionary for the word nigger, spelled N-I-G-E-R. Mm -hmm. Nigger, meaning black. Perfect. So why would they call Peter the black? That I'm, so I'm here, to I'm, here to, I'm here to stress color because it's not stress in the Bible. So now, we read those scriptures to show you color in the Bible. Now I'm going to show you history. Now go to Deuteronomy 28 slideshow. So now, this is what I want you to understand. I wanted you to know I, the, we show which scripture the Israelites are black people. We read Lamentations. If some of you wrote it down, now you got the proof, proof for yourself. Now, in the Bible, every race is in the Bible. Chinese people are in the Bible. Their biblical name is Moab. Japanese people are in the Bible. Their biblical name is Ammon. So all races are I mean, documented yeah, and like A M M O N. That that that's that's their biblical name, and Africans are in the Bible. Israelites, dark skin, just like Africans, two different races of people. So even though we come from Africa, we're not African. You understand? Because remember, when they came, when Europeans came and they started selling us. Africans were selling Israelites, but we're told they were selling Africans. I'm going to show you today, the people that were being sold were Israelites. Now watch this, out the Bible. Get Deuteronomy chapter 28. So I mentioned to you that all races are in the Bible, but when you read the Bible, it is a book of the history of the Israelites. So now we're going to show you who are they. You ready? Yeah, so verse 15. This is the book of De Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Go to verse 16. Verse 16, mm -hmm. cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So Moses, Moses is a black man. Moses said to the Israelites, you're going to be cursed in the city. Whatever cities you are, you're going to be cursed. I want you to keep that in mind as we continue on in the presentation. Why would Moses say, you Israelites, wherever you go, you're going to be cursed. Watch this. Read the next verse. Verse 17, cursed shalt thou basket in thy store. No, curse shall be. Curse shall be thy basket in thy store. Uh -huh. So Moses says your, your basket and store represents businesses. Moses says your businesses, they're going to be cursed. Moses is not talking to everybody. He's talking to the Israelites. He said in the future, your businesses will be cursed. Read on. Verse 18. Now I want you to jump now to verse 48. Verse 48. Uh-huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. So it says, which the Lord shall send against you. Watch this now. Read. In hunger. So it says, it's gonna, God says, the curses that I'm going to give the Israelites is going to be so bad, you're going to have to depend on another race for food. Read on. And in thirst. For water. Come on. And in nakedness. And for clothing. Read on. And in the want of all things. Anything you need. God says through Moses, you're going to have to depend on somebody else for it. You should be able to control these things as a society. God says there's going to come a day you're going to depend on somebody else for it. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So now, historically, what race of people have had yokes of iron on their necks and they had to depend on somebody else for food, water, and clothes? Let's, let's look at all races now. Now we're doing a process of elimination. I'm showing you how this is going to pinpoint who we are. So what race of people historically had to depend on another race for, to survive and they had yokes of iron on their necks? What race did that happen to? You say blacks, okay? You say Jewish people? You say Jewish, so Jewish people, okay. You're talking about Jewish people in Israel today. No, oh. like you said, all races. I'm talking about the Holocaust and stuff like that. So, the, so in the Holocaust, did they did Jewish people have yokes of iron on their necks during the Holocaust? Oh, no. They did. Because they were communist camps. Right, they had camps. But but now look, they were in a, tri a tribulation. But then they have chains where they shackled historically and accurate. So now Jewish people, this can't be them. 
I can't say I know about enough. I mean, I don't. I can't say I know enough about enough different groups of people so to look, be so, able to say. So look. So now. So so one. look. So now. So, so now. You're a bit older than me, right? Now. Now with the school system. With the school system, right? Think about this now. But the reason why I say that because the school system during your time is a little different than the school system during my time. That's why I say that. Now, here's the thing. We've learned about Ethiopians, Africans. We learned about. Have we ever seen images with Jewish people on chains, shackled? No, and I'm talking about Jewish people. No, 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 no. I'm going off of her phone. She said Jewish. I said, can we say that this happened to Jewish people historically? No. Exactly. Thank you. We got to put them to the side. Now we're going to go to Chinese people. Have Chinese people, have you read any forms of history where they were shackled and chained and they had to depend on an entire race for food, water, and clothing? Mm. No. Watch this now. Keep reading. And he shall put a what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck uh -huh. until he hath destroyed thee. Moses said, you're going to have these chains around your neck until you're destroyed. They're going to come off. Look at this. Historically, when you look at a history of a people chained and shackled and bound, depending on another race for food, water, and clothing. Who do you always associate with? Black people and Hispanics and Native Americans. Yeah. Now watch this. Here's my question. Where are you from? Wait, wait, name some of the areas your, your, your family's from. Jamaica, we got. Where else? Haiti. Haiti. Where else? DR. DR. Where else? Guyana. Guyana. Where are you from, man? South Carolina, okay. Okay, so now watch this. How did our ancestors get to all those different lands? Transit boats. Give me verse 68 now. Watch this one. Watch this now. Moses is letting you know what's going to happen in the future. This didn't happen during the time of Moses. This happened later on. Moses just said, this is what's going to happen to you. I was about to say, what happened, nobody what happened? said anything. I said, we didn't do this in class already. Oh, right. <laughs> right. 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 I got you. <laughs> like, you know, no one is saying anything as if this is the first time they're hearing this. Like, you, you know what I mean? Remember, they told us what it's, it's on, the book, like, on the bike itself. And then you told us what it is. That's the real deal right here. <laughs> go ahead, go, go. So now, so, so, so watch this. So watch this now. Verse 68. You get, get the pictures ready, right? Go ahead, read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, oh, chapter 28, verse 68. Oh, no, this has it over here. Yeah, perfect. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt uh -huh. again with ships. So the Bible says the Lord is going to bring you into Egypt again. Egypt represents the house of bondage. It says, because remember, historically we came out of Egypt. He says, now you're going to go back there. You're going you're gonna to go to a place that is going to remind you of when you were living in Egypt. But this place I'm going to bring you to? You're going to need to get there with what? With ships. With what? With ships. Who were on slaves as, who were on ships as slaves? Dominicans. Blacks. That's how we got to America. This is how we got to it. Yes, sir, Todd. So, I'm looking at the image. It says women, boys, and men. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why well, don't say girls? You know what I'm saying? It is. It, that's just how, how, they, how they labeled it. How they labeled. Do we have another picture of ships? Look at this. This is how they got this. This, what we're showing you, is historically accurate. The only difference that we're doing today, we're showing you the Bible also documented this. Now we're using pictures to show you that what at one point in time was a prophecy, meaning it didn't happen yet, it's going to happen in the future. Today, we now call it history. Yes, ma'am. So, from what I'm interpreting, it seems as though God was the one that created slavery. Yes, Yep, yep. Not for what reason? To, te to teach us a lesson. What lesson is Because we, there you go. We're not allowed. Following the Ten Commandments. There you go. You see his shirt? And see I got the thing at the bottom? We put, I put out the, the fringes. Nice. Fringes? Amazing. We supposed Amazing. to wear those on the bottom of our shirts. You see, now look, what were some of the laws we were breaking? We were worshiping other gods. Adultery. You, oh, let me ask you a question. You think menage a trois is new? This was happening during that time. God says you're not supposed to be having sex with two women at the same time. We were doing that. Guess what? All of these said we were doing. 
So God said, Moses, tell the Israelites, if they continue in these sins, this is what's going to happen to them. And historically, you know what our ancestors said? We said, amen. Meaning, let it be so. Let it be. What you said, God, we're not going to, we're, we're going to keep the commandments. What did we do? We broke them. Give me uh, uh, verse 37. Oh, sorry. We didn't finish 68, right? Yeah, first Finish 68. 68. Watch. Uh, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt uh -huh. again with ships. Right. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Uh -huh. Thou shalt see it no more again. All of us here come from the same area. I know we meet Dominicans in the street say, hey, Papa, no, me no black. I meet Dominican, we not black. But guess what? Dominicans are black. Puerto Ricans are black. Colombians are black. How? Because when you look at the history, guess what? They were shipping Colombians back to Africa, back to Spain. Remember, it, the slave trade was a business. Mex Mexicans, black. Honduran. Go to the Bronx. You'll see Hondurians way darker than me. Facts. You, you'll see Hondurian, and guess what? Facts. You talk to some of those Hondurians, they'll tell you, I'm not black. He's darker than me. And he'll say, I'm not black. Why would he say something like that? It's Panamanians. Panamanians. Mm -hmm. Why would he say something like that? Because we, love, we forgot who we are. Mm -hmm. We forgot who we are. And I'm showing you, the Bible said this. You're not, you don't learn this in church. You don't learn this in church. But this information, this is good to bring out in churches, in uh, religious uh, uh, locations, uh, jails, because our people need to learn this. Yes, sir. Ars, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So it's supposed to be specifically for Israelites or for black people in general, because I know there were black people in, in America before the slave trade. Absolutely. So, this is, guess what? This is talking about them, too, because they were affected by the slave trade. So what am I doing? I'm showing you, because remember, Native Americans, they shipped them to Spain too. Now look, what am I showing you, Ars? I'm showing you, remember in the beginning I said, all nations are in the Bible. But I said, this is what we're going to do. With process of elimination, we're going to find out who are the Israelites though. So now we're doing process of elimination of who are the Israelites in the Bible. And so far, who is it pointing to? What people? Black people. Latino people. Native American people. These are all people that were affected by the slave trade. Colombians, Grenadians, uh, Panamanians, Guatemalans. The slave trade covered a vast... Guess what? There are Negroes that was taken and shipped to Syria. Yes, yes, yes. India. All over the... You, you have that map? You, we'll get it later. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. No, I, I want to stay on topic. So now, where are we going? Jeremiah 22, verse, verse 13. Read this. Watch this now. This oh, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm glad you finally came up from here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you came from India, too. And yes. Like, sorry, finally, you finally. Yes. And now, now, now remember, when, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the CD, CD, CDs, right? yeah. the CDs in India are the Negroes that were suffered from the slave trade. The CDs. In the if I'm not mistaken, S-I-D-I-S. In the Dalits. And the Dalits. The, now, when you go to India, you see East Indians. Those are the ancient Persians, the ancient Persian Empire. That's East Indian people today. There is a section, there's a people in India called the Sidis and the Dalits. Those are the people, the remnants that go back to the slavery. This is in India. We, we are all over the world. Yes? I was going to say, there's also, we're in China. China as well. Slave ships went to China. There's a book called The Black Holocaust. And it lets you know that Chinese were selling black people. So what we're showing you out the Bible, a lot of this history is not covered. And look, I didn't even get to the books yet. To show you the pictures, I'm going to pass these books around. I'm going to pass these books around. So watch. We read this. Right, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 13. Uh-huh. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. The Bible says, woe unto him that builds a house by unrighteousness. How was America built? By unrighteousness. How was this country established? Thou shalt not steal. That's how they established the country. Thou shalt not kill. That's how they established the country. God says that's unrighteous. All right, read on. In his chambers by wrong. It says in his chambers by wrong. Well, a chamber today will be like an example. Uh, a very high dweller will be like the White House. Who built the White House? The White House. Our ancestors built the White House. Watch this. Read on. That uses his neighbor's service. That uses his neighbor's service. Because remember, 
Remember, Caucasians, they are neighbors, right? We're, we're going historical of what happened. Read on. Without wages. Did we get paid for building this country? No. What comes up in every presidential election? Reparations. Mm -hmm. Reparations always comes up. And guess what? Once reparation comes up, we got to allocate the funds to different parts of what's going on in the country right now. We just can't get to black people right now. We're going to try to get to black people. Guess what? When war propped up for Ukraine, send $500 million to Ukraine. I'm just showing you, when you read your history, then you'll be able to make connections. God calls you the Israelites. So read that again. It says that uses his neighbor what? That useth his neighbor's service without I, wages. Remember, all of our ancestors, they were used for a service. What was the service our ancestors provided? We built countries. We built houses. We built this country, right? Then it says, without what? Without wages. Read on. And giveth him not for his work. Uh-huh. That's it on that. Uh, get me, go back to Rome 2068. You Rome 2068. Yeah, we're going to finish that. You got the image? I know I got you all over the place. Right? Yeah, you good, you good. Verse 68. Watch this now. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. So how do we get to South Carolina? Ships. How do we get to Guyana? Ships. How do we get to Haiti? Ships. Now, you know what's so interesting about Haitians and Dominicans? They are brothers. They are brothers. I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's so interesting. I'm going to tell you something. So, I'm going to tell, tell you something that's real. When I grew up, I remember my, uh, my grandmother told my uncle, don't marry a Dominican woman. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I didn't know what that meant. I was like, why say don't marry a Dominican woman? I never knew what that meant. Never knew why. Why? Because that hatred runs deep. But guess what? They're the same people. They're the same people. You understand? So now, read this now. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships uh -huh. by the way whereof I spake unto thee. So Moses says, just how I'm telling you, you're going to go into slavery, that's how it's going to happen. Exactly how I'm telling you. Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. Our homeland, we're not going to see no more again. So when we have our uh, flag days, right? Haitian flag day, Dominican flag day, all that is, is just promoting a division between us. That's what it is. Because remember, we're the same race. God calls us the Israelites. Read on. And there he shall now be. Now watch. It says, and there. Meaning wherever that slave ship goes, and there. Now here's my question. Historically, when the Dominicans got off their ships, because remember, they took some Dominicans, sent them over to Europe. That's what happened. Colombians, Haitians, African Americans. When we got off the slave ship, what happened to us? There was something that happened. When they took us off the slave ship, what did they do to us? What happened? Who could get it? Who remembers? Yes, ma'am. They sold us and separated us. Miss, you cooking with gas. <laughs> Read this. <laughs> and there ye shall be sold. What did the Bible say? And there ye shall be sold. I didn't make this up. I'm reading you what God says, ma'am. This is for what? I'm reading you. This was written before Christ. This was written even before Christ. Tell me the Bible's not a true book. This, this is why you see us in the street, aggressive, with passion. And then guess what? When it's time to bring it down, we bring it down. But we're very passionate because look at this. This was written, remember, because we're reading Deuteronomy. Moses is way before Jesus Christ, way before. But guess what? What was a prophecy back then? It's history now. Watch this. Read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies uh -huh. for bondmen, slave men, and bond women. Slave women. Why is that important? Why did I stress that? Because guess what? Today, black men and black women, we get divorced. A lot of us don't even get married. And you examine all races, the most broken family is the black man and the black woman. So why did I stress that part? Because guess what? We went in slavery together. <clears throat> We're going to be redeemed together. So that's why the family is so important. That's why. Because remember, remember this too. Let me show you how bad the division is between us. When Haitians came to this country, when Jamaicans came to this country, remember, they, they had what? Civil rights. 
a lot of times other other races uh, of our brothers, they come here and they say, that black man is lazy. The black, black people are so lazy. Who gave you your benefits? Who gave you your civil rights? That was the black man that got that. The civil rights we have today, who was that? Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael. Mega. That whole, Mega ever, that whole, remember, and a lot of the civil rights, a lot of those are teenagers. A lot of those, a lot of adults, our parents back then, a lot, Martin Luther King, they were leaders during that time. But guess what? The support behind them were college students, teenagers. So when people say, oh, black people are lazy, because what do they say? They say, man, we come here, we work three jobs, seven jobs. Why, why black? They just sitting here off of benefits? No, it's not. All of that, that's just ways that it, it divides us. You understand? But we're the same people. Now, so we read, you finish it? Okay, finish it. And no man shall buy you. When it says no man shall buy you, it's an old English word, which means no man shall redeem. So Malcolm X tried to save black people. What happened? He failed. Before Malcolm Martin Luther King died, you know what he said? I fear that I've integrated my people into a burning house. So what was he saying? We, I should not have tried to push integration. That's what he realized before he died. So Malcolm X tried. Jamaica, who was the biggest man from Jamaica that tried? Marcus Garvey. He had the, one of the largest movements, Marcus Garvey. Remember, uh, Jamaicans, Jamaicans say, we, Marcus Garvey, he a Garveyite. But guess what? Marcus Garvey left Jamaica because the Jamaicans rejected his teaching. And he came to Harlem to teach. And African Americans accepted him. Later, Jamaicans said, wow, what Garvey was teaching was right. A lot of people don't bring that history out. At first, the reason why Garvey left Jamaica, because they did not want to hear him. So he came to America. So... Where we at? We finished Deuteronomy, right? So now, watch this now. Watch this. So now, the picture is starting to become clearer. Arise ye and depart. It says, arise and depart, meaning what? Change your mind. Watch what it says here. For this is not your rest. This is not your rest. That Meaning, this is not the, meaning Jamaica is not the place to get comfortable. Haiti is not the place to get comfortable. America is not the place to get comfortable. Why? Because that's not where you're from. I said, everybody here... That's not your real name. That's not your real name. Look, if I if I may, what are some of your last names? Etienne. Et Etienne? Etienne. Etienne. Isaac. Isaac. Joseph. Okay, so you good. Isaac, good. You good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your last name? Howard. Howard. Okay, what else? What are the last names? Brissette. Crissette? Brissette. Brissette. Okay. Desinor. Desinor. So that's that's French, right? Desinor. Okay, so now. Give me verse 37. Watch this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Uh-huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Moses said, as a race of people, you're going to become an astonishment. An astonishment is an amazement, shock. Said, you're going to become an astonishment. Watch this. Read on. In a proverb. That's an astonishment. Think about it. Remember, the Bible says, the Bible says we're the Israelites. But the Bible says that... As a people, we're going to become an astonishment. Why? Because how could a people so honorable become so low? It says we will become an astonishment. This is an astonishment. Read on. And oh, we'll show another picture. This is an astonishment. This is an astonishment. Meaning what? When you think about a woman, what do you think about? Not married. A lot of them don't show respect. Look at how they dress. Is, am I saying all black women? I didn't say that, but I'm saying this is what the Bible is saying. As a race, it says, Thou, you're going to become an astonishment. When other races of people, let's say Chinese people, when Chinese people, when they think of African Americans, you think they think of that's a respectful group of people. They, no, they don't. Exactly. See, keep it, that's, I'm, I'm being real with you. This is what God means when He says, You're going to become an astonishment. All right? So you may have women, guess what? That respect themselves, that love their hair. That's very respectful. But guess what? There's a lot of women that's not like that. That's what it's talking about. Yes, ma'am. But can we look at astonishment in a positive light? How do we know God meant astonishment in the negative form? I'm going to show you. Good question. Go to verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. 
but it shall come to pass. If that will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, Watch this, man. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The way you know that that astonishment is in a negative light, because verse 15 to 68 are all curses. Meaning everything you read in Deuteronomy 20, verse 15 to 68 is negative. I'm using the negatives that God spoke about with us, about us, to prove our identity. Now read Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 14 are all the positives. But right now, we're not living under that. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1 to 14. We're living under 15 to 68. The slave ship. Because that's right what happened to us. Read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken in diligence unto the voice of the Lord thy God, yep. to observe and to do all his commandments, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, right. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, above all nations. On Historically, the, the people that we just read about, who we are, what we went through, are we on high, above people as a race? No. No, we're not. We could, we could barely get a bank loan. We could barely start a bank. So that's the proof. We're not living under that part. We're living under the 15 to 68. So now watch, watch the, yes ma'am. I just want to say, um, historically, we, we have at times, at uh, times done these things. Right, at times. But yeah. a lot of that history has been erased as well. Absolutely. So, and I, I also want to just say, um, you know, I'm not sure if I want to hear about what people from China think about me or these mm -hmm. other places. I don't want to hold these other other groups of people up higher above, you know, black people. You know they, what I mean? they, they are above us right now. You I know why? Think about it, man. I want you to think about it, man. What's your name, by the way? Leonore. Leonore. Think about it. I mean, I mean you know, if, you, if, we, if we look at it in a limited way, but I mean, China does business in Africa. Oh, yeah. Oh, watch, know, watch this. I'm going to drop one on you, man. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just trying something. to say, I think so, as black people, we don't need to worry about what other people think about us because yes. I don't want to put the burden on black people mm -hmm. for what other groups of people have done to us yes, you know through history. I don't think that that's necessarily fair either. I want you, this is the reason why and I Cardi mentioned B is married. I just want to put that say it again? Cardi B is married. Co Cardi B yes. I just want to say that here. But but what, what her <laughs> image what does her image represent? <laughs> well her outside image is one thing but her Image for real but it, but is it, a little but, different. But this, this is what I want you to see. Cardi, Cardi, like Cardi B like image to young girls, mm -hmm. does it make young girls want to show respect and cover their self? Think about it, Leonor. Mm -hmm. Does Cardi B, her imagery and music, it's not, remember, Leonor, and I want y'all all to see. I, I want y'all all to see something. Look, think about this. Cardi B's image. Hold on, watch this, man. Watch Wait, one second, one second. Watch this. Watch this. Young, young. young. Let him raise all of them. No, that's what I'm saying. It's okay when people like to say like to do things. Her imagery, if she dropped the child, I was like, what's going on? Oh, yeah, I hear that. Because yeah. if you have a daughter, you don't want your daughter out there. I was just about to say that. You don't have no control over that. There's so much absence of that with technology. It's so out here. It's so out here. You can control that from your phone nowadays. So it's like. But, but look at this, Ty. But Ty, look at this. I'm going to piggyback off of what Ms. Leonor said. She said, well, I don't I want to use what other races are saying about us. And I say, no, you have to, because guess what? We're using what other people are doing to measure our success. So you look at other races of people and say, look, look, at, look at what they're doing. And then you use them as an example and say, okay, where, where, where are we? Now, watch this. I think it's the other way around. Watch this. other people uh -huh. follow what black people that's yeah, true, but look at this. Lino, look at this. Lino, look at this. I want you to say it another way. Lino, look at this. This is what this is what other races are doing. This is what other races are doing. Are we known? What are we known for? Entertainment. Exactly. That's when you, Lino. I want you to think about this, Lino. When you don't look at black people in a limited way, but Lino, because we're known for many other things. But Lino, look what you said. I. You said, I ah, don't think about what you. Not, no, it's no, not no. Me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. As black people, we need to take accountability for a lot. Mm -hmm. It goes further than just the black feminist movement. This started a long time ago in the 1800s when 
slave masters came to Africa and picked up our women. They claimed that they were watching us that? and learning mm -hmm. our behaviors. They went back and wrote books talking about how we were naked and how we were gyrating right. and we yep. were vulgar. They went off, and this is the book, these are the books that they send to many of these countries. Countries that at that time had not seen us, so they didn't know what type of people that we were. This is what other countries thought about us. Yep. So it came from way further than just the black feminist movement. Mm -hmm. It right. came back from way further. We have to take accountability that this is what we've been washed down to. Mm -hmm. But we've been great people. We were born great people. Mm -hmm. The point, the one of the facts that we have to also understand is a lot of people, whether we know, all right, so you could say that, all right, most of us don't know where we originally come from. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. That's true. It also goes as far as religion. My family? Yep. My mother's from Syria and Liberia. Mm -hmm. My father is Haitian mm -hmm. and Venezuelan. Mm -hmm. They have a religion. My, mo my mother and father don't consider themselves, they call themselves spiritual Baptists. Right. American people don't have that religion. But many of the things that you're talking about, this is how I was raised. Mm -hmm. So we do know, a lot of us, some of us do know our history. Mm -hmm. However, it's popular culture to look at Carly, and that's what we're w washed down right, to. Right, but right, that right. hate that went around the world, and in Indians, Indians have people called Madras. Mm -hmm. They blacker than this phone right here. Mm -hmm. But if you look at them, they don't think they're black. Mm -hmm. You can't tell them they're black. Mm -hmm. I had a boss that was Dominican who was, you'd have never thought she was black, but when her father came to visit her, she he was darker than me. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, most race have been washed to believe that white is right. And I'm Correct. sorry to say, we just sometimes have to say, no, if you're white, you're pure. If you're white, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're more intelligent. But these are also books that have been going out from since, you could say the beginning of the time since they started talking about us. Chinese people didn't only just sell us. They used us to fight their wars. And then after they were done, when we finished fighting their wars, they killed us. Yep. So, Mal, Mal yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say back to accountability. It goes back to the questions I was asking what you just said. Yes. You know, from Israel, God told us if you don't cut your, if you don't cut it out, right. this is what's going to happen. So in a way, it's like, okay, so we're all here because we did not listen. So yes. we got to say, you yes. know what, we got to get our, excuse my language, we got to get our asses together. Yes. You know? Yes. So. Okay. I, feel, I think that we're just lost as a people. And the reason why is because, first of all, we start to think that our starting point is slavery. And it's yeah, not. It's not. We did not start from slavery. And this is how the books have it. We start from slavery. We talk about the diaspora moving through. We didn't start from there. Y'all have to understand, the pyramids that y'all see is because we built them. Mm -hmm. You know, these things around the globe is because we sent the mathematics. We did the natural herbal medicine. We lived off the earth. These are things, we're just actually lost. And we're sitting here moving through space and time, lost. And until we get together, you know, we're always gonna remain in this place of being lost. And you guys have to understand that what we see Cardi B doing, yeah, she's, you know, she's married now, but she's also started from a sense of being lost. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can't, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't hold her because she made a million dollars on her own with her own talent. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't, that should not be your goal, your goal should be trying to figure out how to get us back to being a communal people mm -hmm. and understand that we can work off of each other's natural energies and not the one that this country has designed for us mm -hmm. to, to live in. The funny thing is, my mother was a spiritual Baptist, but mm -hmm. she told me, and I used to teach Sunday school in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. because she said she wanted me to understand that. So people who went to Catholic Church and is Christian, you have to understand technically, that was Moses when he came back with the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. and he saw that people wasn't living by his Ten Commandments. They basically said that they were going to send us out into the earth, and we were going to live the 40 generations in the wilderness, confused. Mm -hmm. 40 years, yeah. yeah. All of that. So technically, that's us. Now, now religion is a construct, right? So it's designed to oppress us. True. So we're sitting here with the, the millions of religions, mm -hmm. millions of languages, they just they took our language and then because we are being punished, our languages were taken away from us. Mm -hmm. So we are, you know, like not understanding one another, fighting within each other because our languages are barriers. Right. But there's a whole lot of systemic mm -hmm. stuff that didn't just happen in America. We had black people who were selling other black people, mm -hmm. right? And we had other countries that had us in the Middle East. 
And they call it the Middle East, but it's really, if you put those countries together, they're actually Africa, the continent. You know, so it's just something that you guys should like to really look into. So something that you mentioned earlier, man, um, Leonor, that I wanted to say, um, when you look at other races that live here, right? African-Americans, pretty much all of us are here. For the most part, a lot of us are here in this country, right? Chinese people can't immigrate into this country. We were forced to come to this country. They immigrated here. Who owns Flushing? Flushing Queens. Chinese. Where do you go to see banks owned by us, schools owned? It went. That's so, the point I'm making. Whenever we have owned many of these things, mm -hmm. they have been destroyed. Correct. That, and, so and I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, all I was saying was that it's not that th there's always this narrative of black people not doing this, not doing uh -huh. that, whatever, but you Give know, me, uh, this, this, this but, yes, ma'am. But we have done those things. 29. And uh -huh. a lot of that information has been hidden from just regular, from just people who, it's not necessarily in the books. Yeah, that's but, what we, that's, but we've done these things. That's what we did. And every one of us who have a, there's always a narrative about black people. Mm -hmm. But when we look around in our each of our individual families, not just me, but mm -hmm. everybody in this room, we said, we said, wait a minute, that's not my story. You know, that's not my story. And we know that our own stories are a little bit different from what we see them telling us who we are. Mm -hmm. It's like that Erica Badu has that song and it says, but they know who we are. Mm -hmm. And we know who we are. Mm -hmm. And well, it's well, up to well, us to tell, us, tell our not. families and our children. We don't know who we are. Because here's the truth. Look, well, look at this. Your last name doesn't belong to you. But I know my last name doesn't know. Right, right. But look, look this, this is what I'm showing you. That's the proof that a lot of us don't know who we are. Our own last That's name doesn't belong to us. Like that, right? Look at this. I know what to Read this. Uh, 29. 29. Yes. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt grope at noonday, right? As the blind gropeth in darkness. Watch what he says. Now, remember what you said earlier. Could it astonish me? How do we know it's in a negative sense? The way we know is because of verse 15 to 68. Come on. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. It says you're not going to prosper. We went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the Black Wall Street was. We went over there to visit there. Black success all throughout the area. What happened? Bombed. Everywhere you went, Rosewood in Florida, it was a successful black community. Bombed. What did God say he would do? And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. You're not going to prosper. You're not Central Park. You're, you're not going to, oh, what was that place called in Central Park? Oh, Seneca Park. Seneca, Park. Seneca, Seneca Park. Village. There we go. Seneca, Seneca Village. Village. Yes. So it's God's, you're not going to prosper. Watch this. Read on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled evermore. This is what God says. Now watch. Now we're going to go to Jesus Christ. I went to all this history. What happened to us? where we were crushed, where we were murdered, where we lost our name. Wait, we didn't even finish verse 37. Okay. Yes, verse 37. Yes, verse 37. Yes, hold on, watch this. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord had lead thee. A proverb and a byword means you would be called outside of your name. So the reason why I said a lot of us are lost is because a lot of us don't know that our name really is Israel. That's, the, that's your God-given name. Your God-given nationality is Israelite. Now, you can say what you believe you are, but according to the Bible, when you read it, God says, I named you Israel. You're from the country of Israel. What happened? Now, I'm going to show you how do we get here. We showed the ships, but what happened? Give me Luke 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 21. Now, this is coming out the words of Jesus Christ's mouth. Luke 21, verse 20. It's the book of Luke, chapter 21, mm -hmm. verse 20. Go to the Dark Ages. Three, yeah. mm -hmm. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. So Jesus Christ said, when you see Jerusalem is compassed with armies, he's talking about the Roman armies. He's talking about a time period called 70 AD, where Rome eventually said, that's it. Destroy all the Jews in Israel. Christ is warning us something. Read on. Then know that mm -hmm. the desolation thereof is not. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea. Who is in Judea? Our ancestors were in Judea. We, now remember, uh, I forgot what, Br 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 Br
like she, what she said with the history about it was Africa. Remember what I said earlier? The Suez Canal is when they split Israel from Africa. So Christ says what? Then let them which are in Judea. Let all the Jews that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Get out this country. Christ said don't stay in this country no more. Why? Because Rome was going to come and destroy everybody. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So where did we run? Africa. This is how the Jews, this is how we came into Africa. Read on. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein. And in those Israelites that are not in the land of Israel, don't even come back into this land. Read on. For these be the days of vengeance. Christ said, these are the days of vengeance. What is he referring to? Watch. Read. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. What was written in Deuteronomy 28? We had to be enslaved eventually. The Bible, everything written in the Bible, it has to come to pass. So Christ said, I'm letting you know the days of vengeance are coming and they're going to be fulfilled. Read on. But woe unto them that are with child uh -huh. and to them that give suck in those days. Come on. For there shall be a great distress in the land uh -huh. and wrath upon his people. Now read verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The edge of the sword that we fell by was Rome. Read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Christ is letting you know that Jews, all of us, we got out the land. We left. The ones that stayed in Judea, they became enslaved. He said, that's why he said, we're going to be led away as captive to all nations. This is what eventually happened. Read on. And Jerusalem, Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles. That's how you have the people now in the land of Israel. Israelis, um, you have um, Palestinians. Historically, they were not always there. They came in later. Wow, Christ is letting you know. Christ said, us, the Jews, we will be led away as captives into all nations. So now, watch this now. So get me Dark Ages. No, get me the book Nature Knows No Color Line. Yes, sir. The Israelites, who we are, we leave Israel. This happened, that period was 70 AD. Okay, this is my question to you all. We can't, do we all come from Africa? All black people don't come from Africa. So what happened? I'm going to show you what happened. Look at this book here. This is Nature Knows No Color Line. It says, noble family, noble Negroes in coats of arms of noble families. This man right here, this is King Henry VIII. Who's seen the Netflix series called The Tudor Family? How did they portray the Tudor family? What color were they? Caucasian. King Henry VIII. Oh, who's here? Who's this? Queen Elizabeth I. But wait, I thought Queen Elizabeth II just died. Why am I seeing Queen Elizabeth I, a black woman with a crown? Because you didn't know that black people were ruling Europe. We left the land of Israel. What did you say, Todd? They reversed it, basically. They, they changed, they, I'm going to show you what they did. Now, hold, hold this. Watch what Ty is. I'm going to show you what you just watch this. Hold this. Okay. Get, um, uh, yes, the, the, all the way at the end. This is, what, this is what they did. It's called, there's a term called iconoclasm, meaning the destruction of art. This is what they did. You see this image, right? That's a real image. Yes, sir. This is out of a book called Russian Icons. Notice here, Christ's complexion is darker, right? He's repainting a new image of Christ. What color is that new image? This is historically called iconoclasm. And this man here, look, this is called the destruction of art. So you said, wait, so they rebirthed her. This is what I'm saying. A lot of the people we see as kings, now I'm not even dealing with Africa, Ty. I'm dealing with Europe. We're thinking, oh, this is Caucasian. No, they were really black. I'm going to show you here in these books. Queen Elizabeth I was a dark skinned woman. That's like the second name I heard that's like predominantly today white. Exactly. Give me Jeremiah 17, verse 4. I mean, uh, 1 Maccabees 348, that one. one. And then Jeremiah 17. According to Luke 21, 24, we left Israel and went into Africa. In Africa, we became empires. And then from Africa, we spread it into other countries. Europe, Russia, Germany, Poland, Austria. All black people did not come from Africa. 
They got us from Europe as well. Uh, first Maccabees 348, yes. It's the book of First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Mm -hmm. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So this is during the time of Greece. What they did was painted over the images of us being the Israelites. So when you look at it, you would not say black people are Israelites. You would say, look, no, it's Caucasians. But no, the Bible says they were always painted over. So that's why here it's showing you they're destroying the history. Go down. Is there more images? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Look, Russian icons. Black people were ruling in Russia. But we were there before Vladimir Putin. Way before. Go ahead. Show them the name of this book. This is the book Creole, New Orleans, Race and Americanization. Okay, watch what this book says now. Watch this. I'm reading from page 67, second paragraph. Mm -hmm. 16 slave trading ships arrived in Louisiana from the Senegal region. From the Senegal region, so Africa, right? Watch what the author reveals about this. Come on. Six ships came from Judah. Six ships came from Judah. Remember, we read that. Remember, Christ came out of Judah. There's an area in Africa, they call, there was a region called Wida, Wida, or Judah. Wida. Go ahead. Wida, a slave trading post on the Gulf. Wida of was a slave trading post. Read. On the Gulf of Benin near Dahomey. Uh-huh. And one from Cab Caben, uh -huh. Angola. Come on. During the same period. These are the different areas where they were taking slaves. Read on. The slave trade from Senegal infested after 1725. Uh-huh. Between February 1726 and January 1731. Now watch this. Right? Now one of the areas was called Judah. Okay? Now it says here, it was 17, uh, 1,749 slaves came from there. This ship, they took the Jews from and brought them over to New Orleans. So when they went over to West Africa, they knew who they were buying. We're buying the Jews. We're taking them from here. We're going to bring them to New Orleans. You would never see this book in any of the Board of Education. Never. So they're not called, how come this book they call you the Africans? It's calling you the Jews. It all depends. You know what's the problem, too? Now read this now about the Pope. About the Pope. The, the problem Critical review. Yeah, the critical review. Yeah, this one came out 1783. Now, 1783, did we know how to read? Yeah, that's the you were. 1783 in North America. The African Americans know how to read? No. No. We didn't know how to read. Very few of us were there. Why? Because where were we in 1783? In slavery. In slavery. Think about it. I'm trying to remember back on the first 1719. Yeah. We didn't know how to read. So this book, I want you to see how to, what they're talking about in this book when we didn't even know how to read. Read this. This is page 40. Uh -huh. says, Pope Nicholas V. Pope Nicholas V, right? Okay, read on. In that famous bull. Paper bull is an edict. Today we call it an executive order. Come on. By which he granted the unknown world to the Portuguese and Spaniards. So he allowed Spain and Portugal to take part in the slave trade business. Watch what he's saying expressly permitted and ordered the Christians to reduce all infidels into slavery. So they called us infidels and reduced us into slavery. Where did they get us from? From Spain and Portugal. Now, you finished with that part? Yes, I'm going to drop down. Jump down, drop down. Come on. That's the fourth paragraph. Professor Springle devised the history of the Negro trade carried on by Christians. Carried on by Christians. Now, the, the original Christians were us that followed Christ, black people. Later, it became Europeans, predominantly were Christian origin. And they forced us to accept Christianity the way they taught it. Now watch this, read. Into two principal periods. Watch this. The first from 1443. The to slave trade did not start in 1619. It started in 1443. Read. 1443 to 1645. Uh-huh. And the second from 1645 to the present time. Watch this. This is page 141, third paragraph. Watch what it says. King. So the first thing is, they knew they were getting the Jews. The second thing is, it started in 1443. And the Pope, they said, this is allowed by God. But said in his famous papal bull. Read this now. Watch what it says. It says King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the all the Jews to the island of Saint Thomas. To the island of Saint Thomas. That's off the west coast of Africa. So it's calling the Jews, it's calling the black people on the island of Saint Thomas what? Jews, Jews. 
Today, you will be taught that, oh, no, they got Africans. But in 1783, they knew exactly what they were selling. They said, no, those are the Jews over there. And they took them and brought them over to Jamaica. They took them and brought them over to Haiti, Trinidad. Keep reading. Which had been discovered in 1471. Uh -huh. And to the other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. So now when you look at this book, right? It says Yemen Jews and Falashid. Fal no, 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 it says Berber, Moorish, and Negro Jews. All this right here, right? This book right now is $9,500, this book. This book right here, I'm showing you this map. It's $9,500. And this is the map they use to locate where are the Jews in West Africa. So when you zoom into parts of this book, now let's, let's come in over, sorry, hold on, right over here. This says Benai Ephraim. That's one of the tribes of Israel. This is off the coast of West Africa. Come over, right away, right over here. What does this say? The Dahomey Jews. Uh, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out so they see exactly where we are. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. So remember, Christ said run into Africa. He didn't say Africa, but he said flee to the mountains. Where did we run to? Africa. That's, how, that's why in these books, when they took us from Africa, they found all these different black people practicing Hebrew religion. Why? Because we're the Israelites. Yes, sir, Todd. So basically, this is basically what that, that, that film, Hebrews to Negroes, is basically on? Yes. That they Hebrews to Negroes, he was trying to talk about how can you prove who the Israelites are. Exactly. 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 You got Matthew 2.13, right? Yeah. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. This book right here is the same book I have right here, right? It says, remember we read earlier, 16 slave trading ships arrived from the Senegal region. Six ships came from Judah. Do y'all remember that, right? Watch what I'm showing you. This is what they do with the new versions of the Bible and what they do with books. Watch this. You got that page, right? Now look. It says here, go to the next part. Oh, oh sorry. Right, yes. You see here, it says place of origin, Judah, Weida, Weida, right? Now it says total Hebrews imported. 1,749 black Jews <coughs> transported to where is that? Louisiana. Oh. But look, hold on. When I, bought, when, I, when I bought the edited version of the book, Todd, do me a favor. No. <laughs> what do you see? Do you see where it says total Hebrews imported? Because look, that's a tie. Look at this. This is the same map. What I'm saying, do you what you see here, do you see it there? You see how it says total Hebrews imported? Do you see total? Right. It doesn't say total Hebrews imported. And do you, Ty, do you see where it says 1,749 black Jews? Do you see that there? No. No, they took it out. I bought the edited version of the book. So by the time I purchased that book, this version, I have to somehow find it. So that's what I'm showing. Why did it in that book, why didn't they leave total Hebrews imported? Because black people are starting to read more. And you're going to be able to make the connection. Wait, hold on. So we're, we're Hebrews. We were, we, they took us to Louisiana. They took us to Virginia. So what did they do? They re-edited the book, and they just, on the one that I have, it just says total. It says wider. The only way for you to figure it out, you would have to then look into, okay, why does it say wider? You got to do more digging. But with this, it's, they made it plain. Place of origin, wider. The years the ships landed, how many slaves it had, look. 1,749 black Jews transported to Louisiana. Some of us got relatives that come from there. Now, and they called our relatives Jews. Now, this is crazy because the Hebrew thing you said about us. Yes, sir. I heard that from somebody in my building, and I listened to him. Like, I really took his word on it. Yes, sir. I didn't go, nah, you lying. That's good. I took his word on it. Yes, sir. Like, I don't know back then. You read up on it. So yes, I'm sir. Take your word. And if I hear otherwise, come back. Yes, sir. Back it's coming up. It's coming up again now. So now I gotta go back to him and like fake hit him and go do what I just did, but like, he's gonna go off about it. Like, but they're gonna be as polite and like more on some intellectual way. Like he just go like this is it and that's that. Like 
Let me. Sh- I want to show you something. Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Get get me um, uh, Job chapter eight verse eight. Yes, I ma'am. I don't want to interrupt you too much, but if you have to answer after, that's fine. Okay. Who are the people running around now with those white tassels and the black hats converts? Converts. I'm gonna show you something now. Get me um, Daniel. Give me Daniel chapter eleven. Daniel chapter eleven verse fourteen. Historically, they converted to Judaism. That's historically accurate. They come from the Caucasus Mountains. <coughs> so historically, are they Jewish? Yes. Ish means closely related to, convert. If I say you're an adult, you're, you're acting childish. Are you literally a child? No. But are you acting like a child? Yes. So Jewish people today, from, are they Jewish? Yes, because they converted to Judaism. And today, we don't read. We don't know that before them. We were practicing that. Why? Because we are Jews. And what did I read in the beginning? I read all these scriptures where it says, I am black. The tribe of Judah, black. So the information is there. You just got to do the research. Watch. So you got this? Daniel 11, 4, read this. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 14. Mm-hmm. And, in those day, and in those times, mm-hmm. there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Mm-hmm. Also, the robbers of thy people uh-huh. shall, ex- shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. It said, also, the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. That's Daniel 11, verse 14. Give me Revelation 2, verse 9. That's Daniel 11, verse 14. It says, the robbers of thy people. So why does it say that? Because what happened? Eventually, what we saw in the film Joseph's Dream as Roman occupants, eventually... They say, you know what? We're Jewish. We're Jewish. We're Jewish. And we and then there was a period during the time of Greeks where we forced them to follow our religion. That was by a man named John Hycranus. You read about him. John Hycranus forced Jewish, forced Edomites, <coughs> Caucasians, to become Jewish. So now read Revelation 2, verse 9. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 9. Three more scriptures, and then the rest I'm just going to show you imagery. And whatever questions y'all have, y'all can just ask questions. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. I know thy works, Mm -hmm. and tribulation, Mm -hmm. and poverty, but thou art rich. It says, but thou art rich. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy Uh of them which say they are Jews. So Christ said, I know the blasphemy, meaning a lie, of them which say they are Jews. Read. And are not. And are not, Christ says. But are the synagogue of Satan. But are the synagogue of Satan, Christ says. So why does he say, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews? Because they are people that are Jews by birth, and they are people that say they are Jews. And what we read to you is history. Think, let me ask you a question. Anything I just read to you, I want you all to say, anything I just read to you, was that hateful? Was that reading things here that was hateful? No. All, all we did was what? Read history. Facts. Where? Out the Holy Bible. All right? So look, go to, give me Jeremiah 7. Oh, no, Job 8 and 8. Job 8 and 8. Yes, Job 8 and 8. It's the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. So then what I want you all to do is, you can pass this book around. I want you, this is to show the whitewashing. You're going to see his skin complexion is black. Then you're going to see parts of his skin is white. The reason why I saved that book, they didn't finish painting over him. They didn't finish it. That's King Althestin. He's an Anglo-Saxon king. But wait, I thought the Anglo-Saxons are white Englishmen. You ever heard of the Anglo-Saxons? It's, that's, Brit- that's British history. Anglo-Saxon, that's English. King Althestin, you're going to see. They, they didn't finish painting over his image. Those were black people. Now go back to Nature Knows No Color Line with... Um, all those images. So, uh, you got so Job 8 and 8? Yeah, read Job 8 and 8. This is the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Scroll, scroll down to the next For inquire, I pray thee, of the former ages, uh-huh. and, and prepare not. thyself to search for their father. That's what y'all have to do. Watch what Job said. Read it again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Ask yourself of the former age. Sometimes you meet some of us, some of our people that say, I don't look into my history. I, I'm focused on today. Job said you need to ask about the days before you. Ask about the former age. Because look, the reason why we found this is because we were searching. If you look about your history in the past, you're going to learn, wait, everything in history 
it leads me back to learn that I'm an Israelite. Now, uh, the reason why a lot of you did not realize this information, some of that, the books that we showed you, what we read to you, you know why? Because the problem that we're making, we're doing is, when you go to the books section, right? You go to the library, you keep going to Africa. That's not where you come from. You come, you come from where? Israel. So what book section do you have to come from? You have to go to the Judaic book section. That's where you're going to find the history. That is Judaic book section. Yes, Israel's in Africa, but my point is, is that you're looking for books on the history of just Africans. No. You gotta look at the books on the Jews. Judaic book section. That's what that's where you gotta find these books. When I when I was at when I was at the college, uh, excuse me, I want to get that book, Image of the Black and Western Art. Why do you want why do you want this book? Some people, when you get some of these books, they're like, why do you want to read this book? Because I don't normally see people that look like you read these kind of books. That, that, now, that statement alone could make you just like, man, why would somebody say something like that? All right, uh, scroll down. Scroll down, come down a little more. Um, excuse me, sir, you can make turn on that light? Turn that on. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, you can turn that one off. You can turn that one off. All right, go ahead, go ahead, scroll up. Okay, now look at this. French, it says Negroes and coats of arms of noble families. But look, I want to show the bottom. Uh, Jordan, I want to show the bottom. French, Dutch, and Belgian fa families with names of Negro. <laughs> now show the pictures. Look at this. This is before the slave trade. What are black people doing in Dutch, in French, in France, in Belgium? <clears throat> go down, go to the next one. And these are noble families. Go to the next one, go down. Let's see where they're from. Wait, wait, wait. Names of these families, except three, denote Negro ancestry. Go down. Now I'm showing you the art. Go down. Look at this. French, Italian, Spanish. Look, Polish families. But go up. What color, what color are the Polish families? Black. These are all Israelites. But guess what? When you read in history, they're not going to say Israelites. Some of these historians will say Moors. Black people, but these are Israelites who Christ said, leave Israel. And what did they do? They went to different parts of the world. That's why in the slave trade, they didn't get us all from Africa. All right, go down, next the black one. Boys. Say it again, man. The black boys? The black Those were Jews. They, they built an empire. They were located in Spain. They were located in Portugal. The Moors, they were a big empire. Moor means black. The Moors are black. Sometimes you see people say black Mo Moors. That's my are, last name. There you go. Morel. <laughs> Morel is black. Morel. That, that denotes black. These are Moorish names. Look at this. Go down. I want to I show them where they're from. Go down, Jordan. Wait, wait. Go, don't go too fast. Look. German families with names <laughs> of Negro origin. Now go up. Let's see the German families. What color are they? These are Israelites. These are the people that left Israel. And eventually we had empires. But what happened? What did we read with Pope Nicholas V? He orchestrated the slave trade. He said, we're going to reduce all infidels into slavery. In the name of what? Christianity. And what he did? He signed a paper bull. Hence, later on, who do you have? Christopher Columbus. We're going to go find the Jews in these lands. And we're going to force them to learn Christianity. German families, black. Go down. German families, go up. Real quick to show them, no, go up. Black, go down. They don't show these books in school. They do not show these books in school, go down. Look at this, Central Europe. I thought we all just come from Africa. So now I wanna show you something. Okay, now you can turn the light on. So now, this book here is called Russian Icons. This is Russian Icons. Now this is the history when we were in Russia. Now look at what I'm going to show you. What color are these men from Russia? These are saints. What color are they? Black. Now, in case you said, how do I know they're black? What color is the page? And what color is the artwork? Black. And this is artwork found in Russia. Now, 
Sometimes if you're watching the movies, look in the background, you'll see the images. Uh, what was the name of that movie with uh, Dracula? Dracula Untold. And there's a scene in the beginning of the movie where he's speaking to his wife, whatever. In the, in the scene in the back, you'll see icons from these books, and they show black people. A lot of us, we're watching a movie for entertainment. You even realize in the background is your ancestors, the Jews. Look at here, in the book. This, this is not a book about Africa. This is a book about Russia. And look at the color of the people, black. So now I'm going to show you this one. And Amazon was $9,500. But that's why they make it hard to Exactly. So look at this. Who do you think this is? What, what, this man is what? What race? He look Mexican. Is he, does he look white to you? Look at that nose. Oh, no. Look at him out. There you go. What race is this? What would you say? Black, right? This is Spartacus. You saw the series Spartacus? This is Spartacus. Spartacus is black? I'm showing it to you right now. We're talking about the movie 300. No, 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 not 300. Remember the, remember the film Spartacus? It was on H, it was on HBO. No, Showtime. Yep, yep. And then one more, one more, I'm going to show you. One more. Yeah, one question. Yes, sir. This is an update on that book. Go ahead. Um, the book, The Lost Tribes of Myth by Godwin Bay. He said yep. it was 9,000. As of right now, the price of the beginning is 14,500. Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, if you want that book hide it in the book. Put it in the book. Or raise the price. So, this, so what, the reason what I wanted to show you, this here is Edward the First. He's a king. What did they do with his nose? Cut it off. Cut it off. Why? Because yeah, he's black. If you go to the Museum of Natural History, go to the section in Africa. A lot of them have broken noses. But he's not from Africa. He's from he's from England in 1207. So, so what, what, what are we showing you? According to the Bible, we're the Israelites. According to the Bible, we're supposed to keep the commandments. The history that we showed you is throughout books. We were ruling in Europe, and the people over here on this side, the Latinos, they're Jews as well. So thank you so much for your time. Hopefully you learned something today. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Strong in the Lord, his voice.